Remember the story of Job? He had everything. Wealth, family, livestock, all that the world could provide. And the devil went to God and said, I know why Job loves you. It's because he has everything, but take it all away and he'll curse you. So God allowed Job to be tested and he was stripped of everything, his physical health, his family, his herds, his wealth. In the first reading, we then hear his anguish. Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Haven't we all been there? We're all going to encounter the cross, perhaps not to the magnitude of Job, but we're all going to experience physical illness, sickness, suffering, the loss of a loved one. Perhaps you've gone through a divorce in your family. All of us during these recent months have gone through the anxiety of all the social unrest, COVID, being isolated, cut off. What do we do in the face of suffering? I want to share with you the story of Father Carl Zawaki. So he entered the seminary for the Archdiocese of Kansas City in 1956. And it was during seminary that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, MS. And he thought this would end his trek toward the priesthood. But Archbishop Strucker told him, through your illness, you're going to touch many people. And he was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese in 1964. As a young priest, he said he actually prayed that God would spare him from ever having to become a pastor. Be careful what you pray for, he would say, because he was never able to become a pastor because his MS set in. He was reduced to a wheelchair and eventually it was an invalid in his home. But rather than turn to resentment or self-pity, Father Carl began ministering to people out of his bedroom. He would invite small groups of people into his room for daily mass. He celebrated mass on his chest. I was privileged as a seminary to attend one of those masses. People flocked to Father Carl for counseling, spiritual direction, confession. You see, in the midst of his suffering, he didn't turn inward. He didn't turn toward self-pity. He turned outward. The remedy for suffering is to love, to continue to go out to console other people. The second remedy for suffering is gratitude. Think about the life of Jesus and his suffering. He was abandoned by his friends, betrayed, handed over, falsely accused, spat upon, and then he went through the pain and suffering of the cross. And yet, knowing all this was to happen, on the night before he was betrayed, he took bread, broke and blessed it, and gave thanks. He gave thanks to the Father. He trusted in the Father's plan. You see, resentment and gratitude cannot coexist. Self-pity and gratitude cannot coexist. Gratitude is a remedy for suffering. St. Paul says, in all circumstances, give thanks, especially in the midst of our suffering. The final and most important remedy to suffering, Jesus. Jesus is God's answer to suffering. You see, the first reading and the gospel are always linked. So we have the story of Job, the story of suffering. What's God's answer? Jesus. Compassion means to suffer with. And in the person of Jesus Christ, God has visited his people. Jesus entered into solidarity with us to be with us. So often in our suffering, we, we start to think, well, God has abandoned me. I'm alone. Padre Pio said, where we find the cross, there we find Christ. It's the exact opposite. Jesus is with us precisely in our suffering. Now, our tendency in the face of suffering is also to feel discouragement. So we hear Job at the end of that reading say, I shall not see happiness again. Well, in the face of our discouragement, Jesus provides encouragement. I don't know if you saw the AFC championship game between the Chiefs and the Bills, but at the beginning of the game, it looked like we were going to lose. So McCole Hardman fumbled that kickoff and Buffalo scored and went up 9-0. And they showed McCole Hartman go over to the sidelines in total discouragement. They threw a blanket over his head. But then there was this video clip that showed Mahomes going over to Hartman immediately and saying, get back up, get in the game, you're going to make a great play, providing encouragement. You see, that's what Jesus does for us. He provides encouragement. Get back up, get in the game. Think about the apostles tossed about on the stormy sea, distressed, discouraged, and it was Jesus who appears to them and says, It is I, take courage, be not afraid. 
Think of the woman caught in adultery, facing her own condemnation and death. It was Jesus who says, has no one condemned you? Neither do I condemn you. Your sins are forgiven. See, in the face of discouragement, Jesus provides encouragement. Finally, in the midst of our suffering, we can find ourselves tempted to lose hope. Again, listen to Job. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They shall come to an end without hope. Jesus came to give us hope. In the gospel, Jesus shows his power over suffering. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. And then the gospel says, the whole town arrived at the door and Jesus cured many who were sick and drove out many demons. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what about me? What about my family? Why hasn't Jesus healed me? Well, in the gospel, Jesus healed many, but he didn't heal everyone. In fact, the apostles, they find Jesus and they say, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus doesn't say, oh my gosh, well, let's get back to work. I have thousands more to heal. Interestingly, Jesus says, no, it's time to move on. I have to proclaim the kingdom of God to the nearby villages. You see, Jesus' mission was not to physically heal everyone. His mission was much greater. It was to bring about a new kingdom where death and sin would be destroyed forever. You see, physical healings are only temporary. Peter's mother-in-law was healed, but guess what? She eventually got sick and died. See, God doesn't want to just give us something temporal. He wants to give us something eternal. He wants to usher in a new kingdom where death and misery and suffering will be destroyed forever. All physical healings in the gospel, Jesus performed as a sign of something greater, Jesus' final victory over sin and death. In the face of our suffering, remember Paul's words, for this temporary, momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Jesus has come to establish a kingdom, and we see it written around the walls of our church from the book of Revelation. It says, death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Behold, I make all things new.